Welcome back everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how I ran a new sprinkler wire up through my attic and out to my sprinkler valves instead of going underground to get my sprinklers working again. You will see me upgrade all my outside irrigation valve boxes so I have way more space to be able to service my sprinkler valves in the future, including a unique way how to wire up all the solenoids. But stay tuned because Mother Nature will have a say in how this project comes out in the end and you don't want to miss it. What you're seeing is a few weeks before I even attempted this project. I started doing what I always call exploratory surgery. Look what a mess all these wires are. The original installers just wrapped the wires around the valves and the PVC pipes. They used round valve boxes, which I don't like because they barely leave you enough room to service your sprinkler valves or solenoids when it becomes necessary. I'm going to be putting in larger rectangle valve boxes. So this area I dug up got all flooded. The problem was it hadn't rained. So I scooped the water out with a bucket to let the puddle dry out. And after several sunny days, the water hasn't come back. So then I turned on the valves by manually turning the solenoids to let my lawn get watered. And I didn't see any water leaking from the valves while I watched them. I thought because I was manually turning them on for the first time ever, I broke a solenoid gasket and it's leaking now. I also thought a possible source of the water was I hit and slightly cracked a pipe as I was digging it up but so far the water hasn't come back, even though I've been running the sprinklers. But because that wire was sitting in that puddle, they stopped working again, so that's why I was having to manually turn them on. Later on in the video, I'll show you how I tested and troubleshooted the wire, but originally red was zone one, that was down, so then I went with green because it was one of the wires still working, but then that went down, so then I went with yellow. So with orange, yellow, and blue, and all the rest of the second solenoid wires on white for common, I got three zones for the front yard working at least. I wanted to explain all that for anybody who runs into something similar to this, but this is why I needed to complete this project before my lawn was going to suffer during the non-rainy part of the year. So I think the wire colors that were originally working stopped working because it was submerged in the water, and what I finally realized was, when all the zones were working, there's a sprinkler head right over there that I finally covered with one of the old valve boxes. And even worse, there's another sprinkler head just to the right of all these valves. You'll see that sprinkler head later, and that was what was filling up all the water in this area, and I thought the whole time it was a leak. Let me show you how the old wires get to this area. See how there's two? I tested both. I could never figure out where the break was. I think this wire is spliced into this wire somewhere down the line because this sprinkler wire runs along here and then across the driveway to that side of the garage. And then this way, through this conduit, through the wall, to the controller. During construction, they must have made a splice on the ground, and that's why there's two wires. And at this underground splice, I bet it failed somewhere along here. So let me show you where I'm going to run the new sprinkler wire. I want to go straight up this wall, through the ceiling. But the first step is to make sure there's no obstructions in the attic at this location, and the path is clear. So I follow this electrical panel straight up and look in the attic, and I can see all the wires coming from the ceiling. Then I look straight up from this receptacle, and I see the conduit coming out of the cement block wall, and when you look up in the attic, you can see the conduit and the yellow Romex wire coming through the ceiling. And to the left of that is this bay I need clear, and again, when you look up in the attic, there's nothing besides a few wires going across that won't be a problem to miss. So these are the items I'm going to use. One half inch conduit clamps, some standard one half inch 90s with a belt end, 100 feet of 18.7 sprinkler wire because I couldn't find 18.10 locally unless I bought it by the foot or ordered it. It's nice having extra spare wires, but I was in a rush to move the project forward. I want to put these two 90s like this to run the wire from under the controller up into the ceiling. So I position the two 90s where I want them and make a pencil mark in the middle of where the conduit is going to go straight up. Then I set up my laser on my ladder pointing at the pencil mark and follow it up so I can determine the location I need my hole for the conduit into the ceiling. I mark that spot with a pencil and drill a hole with my Phillips bit. Next I stick my glow rod in the hole just to double check everything looks good before I drill the bigger hole. I'll be feeding the wire like this into the 90 and here I'm showing you how I'm sizing up the spade bit I'll use and one inch looks perfect. So I pull out my glow stick and take one last look with the 90 and drill the hole. This is real easy to do in drywall, a spade bit punches through fast. I next stick the 90 in the ceiling and go back up to the attic to check how it looks and I like how it's looking. There's no insulation up here because this is the part of the attic over my garage. Now it's time to feed the fish tape through the hole. This is how the reel works. So I push the fish tape purposely toward the area where my attic ladder is located because that's the area I can stand the easiest. I have an attic floor in this area I installed for storage. 
You can see here the fish tape coming through the ceiling. By sending the tape up in this direction, I didn't need to set up my plywood board between two trusses I use when I work up in the attic to sit on when I need my hands free. I set the housing on the garage door track and I go up to the attic and I pull the fish tape closer to me. Here's a funny shot. As I pulled it, the housing got pulled to the ceiling as it unwinds more tape. I next get the fish tape on the other side of this gas pipe and use electrical tape to attach it to the sprinkler wire. No special connections needed because the hole in the ceiling is much wider than the wire. I always leave the end of the tape folded over for easier unwinding. I double check nothing is tangled and go back down and pull the wire. You can see it unwinding from the coil and getting pulled down. I can feel the wires at the hole so I pull it by hand down and unwrap the electrical tape. And then I just continue pulling the wire down by hand until I feel I have enough to make it to the sprinkler controller. I have a video from when I installed my smart sprinkler controller on my YouTube channel so check it out I'll link it at the end and in the description. The bottom cord of the roof truss run this way and I don't want to run the sprinkler wire straight because I have a lot of stuff up in the attic down this section. I'm going to bend the 90 just a little bit, not that it's so necessary, and run it behind all the stuff I have up in the attic. So with the 90 at the angle I want, I make a mark, then mark where the bell end of the 90 overlaps the straight piece of conduit and take that measurement which is an inch. Next I dry fit the two 90s and put an eye on where I want them and then feed the sprinkler wire through the 90 that will go through the ceiling and make a pencil mark where the end lands on the wall. Then I pull the wire back out. I next insert a straight piece of conduit into a 90 and make a pencil mark. Then grab my masonry bits, tap con screws, and conduit clamps so I can install the two 90s. Using my same pencil mark to line it up, I place a clamp where I want it and mark the drill holes with a sharpie. I next drill two holes using the hammer setting. You just drill until you punch through or slightly longer than your screw. Then I place the two screws in the holes and use my Phillips bit to screw them in. It's kind of hard to hold the tape measure like right here. So I'm gonna just hit the ceiling. And it's about three quarters. So I gotta subtract that once I take my total measurement. This part of the conduit goes to that line. So if I take my tape measure and hit the ceiling and go right down to the pencil mark, I'm getting 79 inches. And if I take 79 inches minus the three quarter inches, I get 78 and a quarter inches. Then I take 78 and quarter inches plus the one inch that goes in the 90 that goes in the ceiling. And that's how I get 79 and a quarter inches. And that's where I place my mark. Then I use my PVC cutters to make my cut on that mark. I go ahead and just hold it up for a dry fit and see where the straight conduit lines up with the pencil marks. And I'll be using this electrical PVC cement to secure my connections. Okay, let's put this together. I feed the wire in the 90 and insert it in the ceiling with my mark facing out. Then I feed the wire into the straight piece of conduit and I'm ready to cement this first connection together. So you can put the cement on the inside and outside of the fittings, but I'm just applying some on the outside because that will make a good enough connection for my use and I push it in with a slight twist. I next remove the two 90s so I can cement them together. So I pull them apart, apply the cement with the applicator, make my connection, and wipe the excess off with a baby wipe. I cut off the end of the wire, then bend it slightly so that as I feed it through, it can pop past where the two 90s are joined and there's a ridge. Now it's through the two 90s, I give it a pull to take up the rest of the slack and get everything back into position in the ceiling. So what's next is to cement the 90s to the straight conduit. I give it a baby wipe and reinstall the clamp. And now we have all the conduits cemented together. So all that's left is to add the rest of the clamps. I like installing the clamps when possible right next to the bell ends. What we're going to do next is feed the wire through the attic and back out down to the sprinkler valves. Then I'm going to show you how to test your wires by doing a continuity test that fails on the old wire but works of course on the new wire. Then finally installing the new sprinkler valve boxes. So I finished up with the last clamp and here's a shot how it all came out. The wire is nicely protected in the conduit. Okay up in the attic here's the wire coming out and I have the coiled up wire right here. This is the path I'm going to run it down this bay and go all the way that way. So I just uncoil the wire and move things out of my way as I go past them and work myself to the opposite side of the house. Here's a shot how this first part of the run looks. Okay, let's keep going. I slip past some more stored items and then toss the wire to this area. This was my path to get here, up the attic ladder, through here, then up and over my foyer which is higher up and right down here is where I threw it. I next climb down and place it up on this higher spot. The ceiling in my foyer is a few feet higher than the rest of the house. I straighten up the coil and place it on a truss. Now I climb up and move the coil to the other side of this raised area and place it on the edge. I have to go down here and make my way to that outer wall. So my next move is just to leave it right here so I toss it to this open area. The roof is going lower here so I'll send my fish tape up, tape the wire over here where I can stand 
then go outside and pull it from the outside. Now back outside, I'm going to remove this rain sensor and this wire, and I'm going to reuse the rain sensor conduit to run my new sprinkler wire down the wall. Because of the rain, all the dirt filled back in. Even the dirt that I had on the side made its way back in and is covering the valves. So this is going to be a pain to dig up. I have to decide how I'm going to go through the soffit. I was thinking I could do what I did in the garage and put a 90, or just push up this conduit past the soffit. But if you remember from the intro, I decided on something completely different. And you'll see why soon. When you're doing these projects, you just start working on it and see how it all develops. So my next move is I got to dig all this dirt up so I can expose the end. And then once all that's over with, then I got to decide how I want to run the wires this way to hook it all up. So I'm going to start the digging at the normal speed just so you can feel how long this took. This is a perfect example why I speed up my videos because this would be real boring to watch in real speed. Okay, that's enough. Let's go. This dirt is tightly packed because it got wet then dried. But I work at it, chopping at it, breaking it up, then scooping it out. I see the wire so I lift it out of the way, then make sure the hole is deep enough so I have clearance to run the new wire. I'm removing this rain sensor because my smart sprinkler controller gets the weather forecast from the internet, so it's not needed anymore. I cut the wire and take out the two screws holding the bracket and it's detached. While I'm up here, I remove the top strap. Then I pull the old wire out of the conduit. To decide my next move, I attach my selfie stick to a PVC pipe, and now I can reach to the edge of the roof to see what my possibilities are. I quickly realize the outer wall goes above the soffit, and putting a 90 will not work. So instead, I just decided to use this feed-through bushing. So I make my mark, drill a hole, and push it in the soffit to test the fit. This will protect the wire as it runs through the sharp metal soffit. Next, I feed my fish tape through the soffit straight in the direction I left the wire, and place the housing wedge between the wall and the conduit. Let's go back to the attic. See how it's waiting for me? I got lucky and I don't even need to bend down to grab it. Next I uncoil the wire so it doesn't get tangled as I pull it. Then I simply tape the wire to the fish tape. I have to mention, if you attempt this DIY project, remember to watch your step. One wrong one and you're falling through your ceiling. As you look at this shot how the wire is ready to be pulled, I want to bring up the reason why I went through the attic. As you saw, besides having to watch my step and it's hot, this wasn't hard to do. But running a new wire under my driveway would have been much harder and I think it's less likely to get damaged up here. Okay, now I just need to pull the wire. I just keep retracting the fish tape until I feel the wire get to the soffit hole, then pull it by hand through as I give it a wiggle, then unwrap the electrical tape. I wind up the last of the fish tape and insert the wire through the feed-through bushing, which protects the wire as I continue to pull the rest of the wire out and down. I next remove the middle conduit strap, but the bottom one, I couldn't get it unscrewed. It was rusted and the screw was seized. So I just bend the strap and remove the conduit. Now I feed the wire through the conduit and take up the slack. Here's a wider shot so you can see how I got the last of the wire pulled through. Next it's time to reattach the conduit to the wall. So I get everything in position and tighten the screw on the top strap with my drill. The bottom strap was easy because I never removed it and I just bend it back. And I reinstall the middle strap. Here's a shot how it came out. By reusing the rain sensor conduit, save me from painting a new one. I left enough wire pull through to wire up the sprinkler valve solenoids. I went back in the attic real quick to check on things and realized as the wire was being pulled down, the insulation was displaced. So I used a small rake to pull it back down. Because this is a low voltage wire, I still haven't gotten to stapling it like you see me do on my other videos on high voltage wires, but I'll get to it during the winter time when the attic is cooler. Let me show you how I tested my old wire and determined there was an issue. I connect my continuity tester remote probe to the red and white wires. Then on the other end, I repeat that connecting the transmitter to the red and white wires. I turn it on, and the green light indicates you have power. But the red light is not flashing, which means there's a break in the line. Now let's repeat the test with the new wire. I cut the jacket with my utility knife, then strip the individual wires. If you guys are liking this video, please hit the thumbs up for me, and consider subscribing to help my channel grow, and to see more home DIY videos like this one. So I again connect my continuity tester remote probe to the red and white wires, and leave it hanging. Then on the other end, I connect the transmitter to the red and white wires. And when I turn it on, the green light indicates there's power, and the red light is flashing and beeping, which means I have continuity and the wire is good. Time to dig some more. I zip tie the solenoid wires so they're out of the way and they don't get damaged. The only way to break up this tightly packed soil was to use a cultivator and rake at the soil and use a hand trowel to dig out the dirt little by little. I'm also having to be careful because I don't know exactly where the PVC pipes are, and I don't want to break one and have a plumbing repair to do on top of all this other work. You are now seeing the sprinkler I believe that was filling up the area with water I was explaining at the beginning of this video. Okay, valve boxes. I first tried this rectangular 12 inch by 17 inch one. It was almost large enough to encompass three valves, but not quite, I didn't like it. It wouldn't leave me enough room to work on the end valves. I quickly realized this one won't work. 
See how the solenoid is literally sticking out of the box? Next, I try this rectangular 10 inch by 15 inch valve box. This size can encompass two sprinkler valves, so I have to use three of them. This is working out better, but I'm still not satisfied. After looking at this in place, I have an idea to get the two valves more centered within the boxes. I want to cut off the end part that sticks out. I need to cut this little piece off first. So on my table saw with the blade tied to the fence, I cut it off. Here's a shot how it came out. So I continue and cut off the other three. Next I need to adjust the fence, so I just cut the part of the box that sticks out, but not the box itself. So I take my measurement and set the fence to that setting, and it's ready. Because I cut that first piece off, the box is sitting more square to the fence as I cut off this next part that sticks out. I just move the box slowly, and the saw cuts right through the plastic. I just continue that three more times, moving the cut pieces out of the way as I make my passes. Here's a shot how it's lining up. See how the end of the boxes are touching now that I cut off those end pieces? Look how the two valves are more centered because I modified the boxes. I'm happy how it came out. The next modification I made to the boxes was to close up these openings that normally allow pipes to run through, depending on how you position your valve boxes. I'm using cut up pieces of thermoplastic rubber and vinyl wall base. I'm gluing them on, and you'll see me later add duct tape over them too. Here's another shot of me digging around the valves. I need to lower the dirt level even more to make room for the pebbles that I use to help with drainage. I continue to use the cultivator to rake out the soil, then use my hand trowel to dig the dirt out little by little. Now my plan is to contain my sprinkler wire and conduit all the way to the valves versus unprotected in the dirt like you saw before. So I need to dig a channel to run the conduit in. That's what you see me prepping here. Besides using my hand cultivator to scratch out the tightly packed dirt, the claw of my hammer was also useful. I want to put a 90 on the conduit running down the wall, then run conduit to the middle valve box. So I keep scratching and digging at the dirt, digging the channel, checking with my level that I'm channeling evenly, adjusting where needed. Okay, let's dry fit and make up all our pieces. I pull the wire through the 90 and insert it. Then I use a scrap piece of straight conduit for alignment purposes and insert that using a coupling into the 90 I'm using to make the turn. Then I place a coupling on the end of this 90, take my measurement, cut my next piece of conduit, feed it through the wire, then feed the 90 that's making the turn through the wire. Now with the scrap piece in the 90, I'm gonna use to run the wire up in the middle valve box. I take my measurement, cut my next piece, then feed the wire through it, then through the 90 dry fitting everything. I won't need to pull this wire back out or fully disassemble everything to cement this up. Just disconnect the fittings. I next place the middle valve box and realize I wanna tilt the 90 forward. To make the run to the next box over, I keep dry fitting to see how much deeper I need to dig the dirt out. So I just keep at it until I think I get it deep enough. Then try it again and finally like how it looks. Let's start cementing. I disconnect the fittings and this time I put the cement on the inside and outside of each connection to really make sure it's extra secure, especially because it will be underground. Now this wire is rated to be buried underground, but for me, running this conduit is really not hard to do for the extra protection and it's fun making this. Also, I didn't want to have to dig up this area ever again. Any problems in the future, I'll just connect a new wire to the old wire and pull it right through the conduit. So I finish up cementing my last connections, and all that's left is to baby wipe the excess cement off for the final cleanup. Okay, now for the last of the conduit install. I take a measurement and cut the straight piece that I will connect these two 90s. I try it out, I need to dig a little bit more dirt out, so after doing that, I put it in place and try it out. Now I repeat it for the other side. I place the two 90s, take my measurement, cut the straight piece to size, put it together, and put it into place to try it. I next bring them over to my workbench laying them flat, then I use a sharpie to mark the lines so I can keep them aligned during cementing. Now I just cement them together making sure my sharpie lines match up. This was more comfortable to do on my workbench versus outside on my knees. I'm also going to feed the wire through them next right here. I had to run out to HD to buy 10 feet more of wire because I didn't want to have to pull more from the attic. So I fold it in half and cut it into two 5 foot pieces. And then I feed the wire through the conduit so it's prepped for wiring. Let's go try it. I put them in place and I'm going to use this long heavy duty zip tie to keep them tight together especially until I fill in the dirt, and I cut the excess off so it's out of the way. I slip on these couplings on all the ends to give it a more finished look, and as I arrange them, they fall into a triangle and that felt right. I decided I wanted to add some fabric staples before I filled in the dirt, so I install them right where the 90s end and hammer them in, then repeat that for the other side. Now before I wire this up, I wanted to clean all the valves and solenoids. I used a flathead screwdriver and the point of one of the fabric staples to clean in all the crevices. Also, I was using an air compressor to blow the dirt off after I loosened it up. Because this is fast forward, it makes it look like it didn't take much time, but it took about 20 minutes. Okay, let's wire up zone five and six. I cut the jacket open with my utility knife and use my diagonal cutting pliers to leave it at my desired length. Then I cut all the wires off besides the white, red, and green wires. 
stripping the ends. Then I clean up and restrip the ends of the first two solenoid wires. They are plenty long enough, so it's a good idea to do this for a better connection, especially if the ends have been exposed to the elements. It doesn't matter which one you pick, just one from each solenoid. So this is really easy to wire up. I take those two wires I just restripped and connect both those to the white wire. I twist them together using a wire nut that is filled with dielectric silicone sealant that surrounds the splice, making it water and corrosion resistant. Now the common is wired for zone 5 and 6. Next, I restrip the ends of the second of the two solenoid wires. Then I take the one from zone 5 and connect it to the green wire, installing the waterproof wire connector. Then I take the solenoid wire from zone 6 and connect it to the red wire, installing the waterproof wire connector. My final step for zone 5 and 6 wiring is to wind up the wires and zip tie them together and clean up anything that dropped in the dirt. Okay, repeating everything we just did, let's wire up zone 1 and 2. I cut the jacket open with my utility knife and use my diagonal cutting pliers to leave it at my desired length. Then I cut all the wires off besides the white, brown, and yellow wires, stripping the ends. Then again I clean up and restrip the ends of the first two solenoid wires, and again it doesn't matter which one you pick, just one from each solenoid. I twist them together, then twist them onto the white wire, installing the waterproof wire connector. Next I restrip the ends of the second of the two solenoid wires. Then I take the one from zone 1 and connect it to the brown wire, installing the waterproof wire connector. Then I take the solenoid wire from zone 2 and connect it to the yellow wire, installing the waterproof wire connector. And zip tie them together and clean up everything that dropped in the dirt. Okay, let's wire up zone 3 and 4. I cut all the wires off besides the white, orange, and blue wires this time. Then I go ahead and strip the four solenoid wires. This zone's wire will be the only one not in conduit since it's already where it needs to be. So I figured out a way to loop it around and I zip tie it to the other wires. You'll see me add a second zip tie in a bit, securing it more. Let's wire this up. So you guys know how this goes now. I take one wire from each solenoid, again it doesn't matter which one, and I attach it to the white common wire, installing the waterproof wire connector. Then I grab the second wire from the solenoid for zone 3 and wire it to the orange wire, installing the waterproof wire connector. Then I repeat all that for zone 4 on the blue wire, and all 6 solenoids are wired up. I finish this up by cleaning everything up, and I again wrap all the solenoid wires together, and again zip tie them to keep them organized. And then I add that second zip tie I mentioned earlier to secure zones 3 and 4 wire even more since it's not in conduit. So this is the waterproof universal electrical junction box I tried. Its waterproof rating is IP66, but I think I needed IP67. More on this toward the end of the video. Let's go wire it up. So my first step is on the wire that I just ran through the attic coming from the controller, take the individual wires and size them up, cut them to size, and strip each one. I install them on the terminal strip which has 8 connections. Starting with the middle two screws for the white common wires, I use a small jumper connecting them. Next I wire up zone 1, 2, and 3 keeping it in order. I have my notes out of view that I'm referring to to remember the color I chose for each zone. Then I wire up zones 4, 5, and 6. It doesn't matter which color you pick for each zone, the colors are just to help you keep a consistent configuration. Then I reinstalled the terminal strip just to see how everything looks. It was much easier wiring this side up with the terminal strip not installed. We won't have that convenience for the other side. Here's a shot how this first half came out. Okay, now let's wire up the wires coming from the solenoids. I cut them to the same length, then I cut the jacket to my desired length for all three wires. I start with zone 1 and 2, shaping the wires to line them up with the screw terminals, marking them with a sharpie, then cutting them to length and stripping them. Then I repeat that for zone 3 and 4, but because it's straight on, these wires are easier to position. Then I prep zone 5 and 6 wires and we're ready to start installing the wires to the terminals. Now everything is prepped and makes wiring this up easier. I'm using a small needle nose pliers to help insert the wires and I just go down the terminal strip wiring up the zones, matching the colors on the wires and installing the white wire on each zone on the middle terminals and making sure all the screws and cable glands are tight. I install a zip tie to hold the four wires together, and here's a shot of everything wired up before we add the valve boxes. And here's the wiring diagram I used if you want to take a screenshot. Okay, let's go wire up the controller. I start by cutting the old wire flush with the wall. Then I push the wire back into the 90s in case I need to pull some back out. Then I cut open the jacket and peel it to my desired length. It's decently thick so I just keep working at it until I get it to where I want it and cut the excess off. Next I strip all the individual wires and like I mentioned earlier, if you want to see how I installed the smart sprinkler controller and all its features, I have that video on my channel. Now to wire it up. This is easy, you just push the correct color wire into the corresponding number terminal and the white common wire gets pushed into the terminal labeled with a C. 
And that's it. I put the cover back on. Okay, let's test it out. I go to my smart sprinkler app and I hit scan valves. This test to see if the controller is detecting the solenoids. And if it does, we wired everything upright. Looking good, it's seeing all six zones. Let's go test this out for real. You can control your sprinklers in the smart sprinkler app, but I'm just gonna use my Apple Home app to turn on the zones. I start with zone one and it's working. Here's zone two and that's working. Man, my grass needed this back up. Now zone three and we're looking good. Okay, let's get back to work and finish up the valve boxes. I'm gonna start by replacing the sprinkler that's right in that area we are working. Might as well while I have it all dug up. I unscrew the old one and screw in the new one. Easy one exposed like this. Next, I fill in the dirt to cover the conduit. I pack it down real good so between the staples and the dirt, the conduit will stay in its position. I want this flat too, allowing the valve boxes to sit level, so I'm evening the dirt out with my hands. Next, I add some electrical tape to hold the wires tighter together. I fold over the end to leave a tab to help unwind the tape when it becomes necessary to remove it in the future. I also personally believe the tape help keeps the dielectric silicone sealant from drying out as fast these wire nuts are filled with. I add one last zip tie and then fill in the whole area with pebbles to help with drainage. I'm temporarily using a piece of wood you see on the right side to contain the pebbles under the valve boxes. That right side past the valve box you'll see me fill in with dirt. I pick any pebbles that got on the valves and solenoids and even them out like I did the dirt with my hands so the valve box is set level. Okay finally let's get the valve boxes installed. I place them back into position and I need a mark where I need to cut the pipe slots to allow the water pipes to pass through. I use a piece of chalk to do this. I take a measurement on how deep I need to cut the pipe slots and transfer that measurement drawing out my new pipe slot cut out. Now at first I try cutting this thick plastic with my snips but it wasn't that easy and taking way too much effort. So why do it by hand when you can do it with a power tool? So I bust out my Dremel and try it out and it was much easier doing it this way. Once I make my three cuts, I use my pliers to remove the piece I'm cutting out. So I continue cutting out the rest of the pipe slots on this first box. And next I add duct tape over the vinyl wall base I use to close up the original pipe slots. I want to make sure they don't come off allowing dirt inside the box. Trying it out, I like it. Came out nice. What do you guys think? Okay, let's do the other two valve boxes the same way. You have to do it one at a time so the boxes are in their exact position or the pipe slot cutouts won't line up correctly. So like anything you do repeatedly, this got easier and easier to do the more I cut out. I got my technique down. So I make quick work of cutting out the second box's pipe slots and finish up by adding the duct tape. Let's go try it out. I put it in place and here's a shot how everything is lining up so far. You want to make sure if anybody steps on the valve boxes, they don't push down on the water pipes. One last box to go. I'm going to really fast forward this third valve box because you know the drill by now. I like showing you all the steps in my videos, but you don't need a play by play of the exact steps three times in a row. So I put it in place with a wiggle and here's a shot from the side as I check out the alignment. Then I use my level to make sure all three valve boxes are at the same height making any adjustments needed. Now it's time to put the dirt back. I put the lids back on the valve boxes to make sure no dirt gets inside them as I do this. And I just keep shoveling and raking the dirt into place. Check out how much dirt I needed to fill back behind the valve boxes. So I just kept working at it little by little. This dirt was so hard to work with because it kept getting wet. I would have to chop it up so I could scoop it up. I finally got all the dirt back and used both sides of my rake to level the whole area. I was so happy to see this area of my yard not dug up anymore. I brush off the valve box lids and next reinstall my rubber curb landscaping edging and use rubber mulch to fill in around the boxes and do one final brush off of the lids. Here's a shot how it came out. Really awesome, right? But don't go away just yet. There's a little bit more to this project. I turn on this zone to start to get my grass to regrow in this area since it's been down a while because my sprinkler wire broke. And here's a closer overhead shot so you can really see how clean this looks now. How the conduit protects and carries the wires from box to box. How the waterproof universal electrical junction box can be pulled out of the middle valve box for servicing and diagnosing any problems. I was so happy I had one of the coolest and unique sprinkler valve boxes set up in the world. But then, it started to rain. Now of course I knew it was going to rain one day soon. And that's why we put pebbles at the bottom of the valve boxes to help drain the water. That's why we put waterproof wire nuts. That's why we used a waterproof junction box, I thought. One of the factors I didn't think about is my house doesn't have gutters and how much water really collects in this area of the house. The whole roof is slanted down this way and a lot of water pours down. So after it rained I go check it out and yep the valve boxes are filled with water to the top. I was hoping worst case halfway but no luck with that. Maybe if I had gutters. Opening the middle one I was like no. All my hard work is submerged in water. I was so sad guys. Well it was listed as waterproof but I was still never intending on them getting submerged. Let's open it up and see. So I unscrew the last screw and lift the lid and wow, it's filled with water. This thing is not waterproof. I go ahead and spill the water out, 
Now let me show you what I did to protect the terminal strip and wires. Let's go back in time. I applied a lubricant that helps prevent electrical malfunctions and restores damaged equipment caused by water penetration, humidity, condensation, and corrosion. It's from CRC and it's called 226 Multipurpose Precision Lubricant. And I had sprayed on some in advance thinking it would help with displacing moisture from just humidity to prevent corrosion. But that was wishful thinking. It got soaked. So I came up with a plan B. I didn't want to give up on my dream of not having a disorganized mess of connectors in the middle valve box. Back to present time. So I picked up the second valve box and my plan is to install it over the middle valve box to keep the junction box from being submerged in water. Let me show you. Check it out. See how I can keep it on the top of the bottom box rim so it stays out of the water after a rain? The wire connectors also stay out of the water. Now if my valve boxes were in the yard, this might not have worked because it could be a trip hazard. But as you saw, my valve boxes are close to my house, inside a landscape border where no one walks. After a solenoid repair, I use isolation displacement connectors or IDC connectors I bought on Amazon. I like them better than the waterproof wire nut connectors. See how I keep it out of the water? I'm really wondering if I had gutters, would it fill up this much? What I want to try next is this IP67 waterproof electrical project box since I'm still getting a little bit of water in my IP66 junction box. I think from humidity. IP67 rating indicates that if a product is waterproof, it can withstand being submerged in water up to 3 feet deep for up to 30 minutes. Please let me know in the comments if you have successfully used a junction box for your irrigation wiring and which one you used. So that's it guys, I hope you picked up some tips on how to run a new sprinkler wire out to your valves, how to test your wire for continuity to see if you have a break in the line, and how to upgrade your irrigation valve boxes for way more space inside them to be able to service your sprinkler valves in the future. Please remember to hit the thumbs up if you like this video, and if you're a home DIYer, be sure to subscribe to see more home DIY videos just like this one. Click on any of these links on the screen to check out my other home DIY videos, one I show you how I installed my Yardian Smart Sprinkler Controller, Thanks again for watching. Bye everyone. Ah!